Hello everyone, welcome to Grammar and Writing Lesson 7. Hope your day is going well today. All right, let's get started. Vocabulary. We are starting with a prefix focus today. This prefix focus is miso. Miso. Again, this has a Greek origin to it. So it means we got it, we stole it from the Greek language. And it means hatred. <clears throat> hatred, so a very strong dislike for something. Our first word is misogynist. Misogynist. That's a noun. Misogynist. Don't forget to be pausing the video to write things down when you need to. The definition of a misogynist is someone who hates or mistrusts women. They hate or mistrust women. So a misogynist is not a good thing, not a good person to be. The employer, a misogynist, only wanted to hire men. Number two, misoneism. Misoneism. This is the hatred or intolerance of change. Misoneism. The company's misoneism caused its eventual downfall. So it caused the company eventually to die. The company's misoneism caused its eventual downfall. And the last one for today is misogamist. Misogamist. Don't get that mixed up with misogynist. This is misogamist. Misogamist. And that is someone who hates marriage. Someone who hates marriage. What a sad thing to hate, right? I think most of you probably want to get married someday. So do I. Someday. <laughs> In the fall or just the future. Who knows? But anyway, that would be really sad to be someone who hates marriage. Clarence, a misogamist, preferred the single life because he hates marriage. Ooh, so sad. Let's practice. Fill in the blank with the correct vocabulary words. Number one. Sometimes a broken-hearted person becomes a bitter blank. Which word would fit in there best? If they're brokenhearted, we don't know if they're male or female, but they are sad. What would they hate? The blank avoided contact with women as much as possible. Is blank more common among the elderly than the younger generation? Or do people of all generations dislike change? All right, number one is a misogamist. A brokenhearted, sometimes a brokenhearted person becomes a bitter misogamist. Someone breaks your heart, you don't want to get married, so you're a misogamist, you hate marriage. The misogynist avoided contact with women as much as possible. They're a woman hater, so they wouldn't want to be around women. Is misoneism more common among the elderly than the younger generation? Or do people of all generations dislike change? So that dislike change part should have been your clue that this was talking about misoneism. All right, that's it for vocabulary today. Let's talk about sentences. The sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought and contains a subject and a predicate. Remember that your predicate, that's just another word for verb. Now this is the same slide that you saw yesterday, so this is just a reminder. Complete subject, that's the whole thing. Then you have your simple subject, which is one or two main words. Same thing with predicate. All right, today we're talking about compound subjects and verbs. When something is compound, there's more than one of it. Single sentences, also called simple sentences. Now that's very important to remember. You need to put that in your brain. A single sentence, meaning just one sentence, is also called a simple sentence. That can have two or more subjects and or two or more verbs. Two or more subjects and or two or more verbs. But they're all part of your simple sentence, your one sentence. Multiple subjects or verbs are called compound. Like I said earlier, it means you have more than one. A compound subject. This is two or more subjects connected by words like and, or, or nor, and, or, or nor. These subjects share the same verb. So even though you have more than one, they go with the same 
verb. They share the same verb. For example, the books and papers were in place. Your verb is were. Who or what were? The books were and the papers were. So you have two subjects, books and papers. They both share the verb were. Books and papers were. So that's what makes it compound because they're both sharing that verb. James and Anne ran, excuse me, James and Anne raced towards their house for dinner. So what's your verb? Raced, very good. Who or what raced? James raced and Anne raced. Both of them are doing that action. So they're both sharing the verb raced, but both things are doing it. So both are your subject, making it a compound subject, James and Anne raced. So it's one sentence, a simple sentence, but with two subjects. Let's check out verbs. A compound verb is two or more verbs connected by and, or, nor, or even but. These verbs share the same subject, just like a compound subject shares the same verb, Compound verbs share the same subject. Bradley jumped and kicked his heels together. What's the action? Jumped and kicked. Both are actions. Remember, don't stop just after you see one verb. Check your whole sentence, see if you can find more. So who or what jumped and kicked? Bradley. Bradley jumped and kicked his heels together. So you have those two verbs, they're both sharing the subject Bradley. The trees groaned and swayed in the strong breeze. What's your action? Groaned, that's when those trees are like making kind of an sound, that's groaning. And swayed, that's moving back and forth. So that's your action. Well, who or what groaned and swayed? The trees, the trees groaned, the trees swayed. So trees shares that verb, groaned and swayed. A simple sentence may contain both a compound subject and a compound verb. So there, your two subjects share the same two verbs. Your two verbs share the same two subjects. For example, Jesus and his disciples went up onto the mountain and prayed. Look for both of your verbs first. Remember, that's the step. Find your verbs first. Went is the first one. Prayed is the second one. So don't miss your verbs. Make sure you get both of them. Went and prayed. Well, who or what went and prayed? Jesus went and prayed. His disciples also went and prayed. So Jesus and disciples went and prayed. Prayed. So both the verb, excuse me, both the subjects share both of the verbs. Justin and Christopher walked up the hill and sat under the apple tree. Find your verbs. Walked and sat. Very good. So who walked and sat? Well, Justin walked and sat. Christopher also walked and sat. So those are both your subjects and walked and sat are both your verbs. A common mistake in writing is repetition of the subject or verb. So that means in separate sentences, you keep having the same subject or the same verb over and over again. Combine a repeated subject with a compound verb. So instead of having a bunch of sentences with the same subject, Make one sentence with that one subject and have it share the different verbs, making them compound so they're all in the same sentence. Look at this example. I cooked my lunch. I ate my lunch. I then rushed to the meeting. I, 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 all over and over again. So that's a lot of repetition of the word I. We can combine that to make it a little bit less repetitious, a little bit more exciting. I cooked and ate my lunch and then rushed to the meeting. So 
So you combined cooked and ate because they're both talking about lunch. Then you need to add an and again for and then rushed to the meeting. Now it's okay to have that then there. Some of you are probably saying, but Ms. Ashley isn't going to run on. No, this then right here does not make it a run on because there's no subject right here. If I said, and then I rushed to the meeting, then it would be a uh, run on. But since there's no subject, it's just adding a time to that verb and it's perfectly fine. If you have a repeated verb, make it have a compound subject. So use that verb just one time and use a compound subject. For example, the Wildcats are in the tournament, the Warriors are in the tournament, the Red Sox are in the tournament. Each time you have are in the tournament and it's really repetitive and a little boring. So just make that a compound subject with that sharing that same verb. The Wildcats, Warriors, and Red Sox are in the tournament. It shortens your writing and it makes it a little less awkward sounding as well. Okay, your homework is to complete language C, pages 11 through 13. You'll notice some of that is reading the blue boxes. Please read those blue boxes, the look closely boxes, anything you see, read it carefully so you know exactly what we've been talking about in the lesson. You will get a little extra practice. Sometimes it may be my exact words on the video. That's okay. The more you read it, the more you see it, the more it will help you to remember it. All right. Have a wonderful day, guys. I love you and stay safe.